Now, imagine being told you don't have the right to design your your daily or your nightly routine, uh, that your basic needs will be met on someone else's limited and degrading terms, even if at all. Imagine your life's goals and ambitions having to be curtailed or moulded around someone else's limited schedule. I can't imagine a life like that. Paddy Slattery is a filmmaker and a wheelchair, a whe- oh, beg your pardon, a wheelchair user. He's from uh, Clonbelogue. He joins me now. Uh, Paddy, you're very welcome to the programme. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm very well. Uh, delighted that the temperature has risen, to be honest with you, Paddy. <laughs> I'll tell you, everyone is dropping like flies around me here. It's an absolute miracle. I'm the only one that's touch wood avoiding this ghost. It's called. <laughs> oh no! Uh, that you see, yeah. with, the, with the with the way the weather fluctuates. Yesterday, when I arrived in, it was minus four degrees. Today, when I arrived in, it was eight degrees. You know, so it's dress uh-huh. dress for the weather. So tell me yeah. about, I suppose. Um, a personal assistance service because not all people with disabilities are are able to avail of this service. That's right. Would you believe? I think I don't know how many tens of thousands of people in this country with a disability actually require the the services of a personal assistant. But all I know is that about on 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 a yearly basis, only about two thousand which is a tiny fraction of those people actually avail of not just a, a personal assistance service, but an extremely limited service. I think on average, someone receives about 42 minutes of personal uh, assistance uh, during the day. And that's like if you have somebody coming in helping you, uh, I guess, enabling you to do something in your day, 42 minutes is barely going to get mm-hmm. you out of the bed and into the shower and you might get a cup of tea and that's it, good luck. So that's more like a, a home help, the, um, somebody who's supplied it, via the HSE or some of the private um, healthcare facilities. Well, see, that's the problem. A personal assistance service in this country is only considered in the eyes of the government uh, like, a, pro- like a, a test project, a pilot project. Mm. So there's actually no guarantee that it will even be there next year. They don't even put the funding or the proper legislative rules in place in order for it to actually be an effective model. So, like people like myself and many other people, like I have, I have huge ambitions and goals and and lots of stuff I want to achieve. But to be honest, I could wake up in the morning and the government will tell me that they're just going to cut off the few quid that they give me to to enable me to do some of the most basic things in my life, and. Anyone that's ever relied on home care or even institutional care will know that you really don't have a life, per se, because you're living your schedule, your morning, afternoon, daily and nightly routine at the mercy of somebody else's clock. And generally with home care, you know, somebody might have about four or five different clients during the day and they'll they'll visit you at, what, quarter to nine, help you with some like some uh, some very very basic needs and then head off and that's it you might get assistance that night going to bed or whatever mm-hmm. and you're pretty much grounded or if you're very fortunate like me i have a huge family i can i can rely on my brothers my sisters my mother my father everyone and it's if if i didn't have that situation i'll be honest with you i would probably need i would probably need to live my life in a residential home and that, and that 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 wouldn't be fair because you are you're quite able bodied even though you are a wheelchair user you are out and about and you are doing things and with the help of a personal assistant uh but you yeah. know the government i think um they don't do they see this as an unnecessary expense because the debate on personal assistance services yeah. taking place today with the vote being held on the issue on this coming yeah. thursday so do they yeah. see this as an unnecessary expense? Well, they see it, they actually think that the home care and the residential care model is actually saving the government money and it's actually costing, I don't know the exact figures. Mm. You can actually get, the, if you wanted the exact figures, I know organisations like the Independent Living Movement Ireland would have that information, but all I know is a personal assistance service actually costs, I think one, I think it's 10% of what home care health costs the government 
annually. But not only that, when I've got a personal assistance service, I can actually go out into the workforce, have employment, have some kind of a life where I'm actually paying some tax and contributing to the government. But it's not even the fact that they don't con- that they consider it an unnecessary expense. They just don't consider people with disabilities to be quote unquote normal people. We're treated like second class citizens, and it's like. Is it any wonder there's so many people across the country relying on the medical system? And, I mean, even our mental health, I mean, I, I'm not sure what the statistics are there, but I know that there's a huge increase in, in depression across the, the disability sector. And that's that's simply because we're not given, afforded an opportunity to have a, quote, normal life in this country. I thought we'd moved on from that. I thought that we we actually treated people equal. I thought everybody was equal in the eyes of everybody else. I know people. No. I know people who've got cerebral palsy and they they live a normal everyday perfectly livable life and they're very yeah. happy and they're treated well by, by me and by everybody I know. As the rest of us, I don't see any difference in them. They just do things a little differently. We're all wired a little bit differently. Well, see, that's the thing. When you've got governments and even society treating us as something different, then we'll never really be... Like like you said there, it feels like we haven't really moved forward. Mm. Unbeknownst to many people in the mainstream media, every year there are unsung heroes in the disability sector, out there on the street campaigning for not just disability rights, but basic human rights. You know what I mean? So we think we've moved on, but but this personal assistance service in its current incarnation is a pilot project. And I can guarantee you the government will pull the plug on it any time they see fit. I don't know. Talk to me about the personal assistance service. How does it work? How do you apply for a personal assistance? How do you apply for this service? Right. There's disabled persons organisations across the country. For example, in Offaly, there's the Centre for Independent Living Mm -hmm. and they provide me with a personal assistant, right? So they would would, um, have the money that would provide say, a certain amount of hours through the HSE, and I would have a person basically come out and help me with certain uh, things in my life because I'm quadriplegic. As you said, I'm a wheelchair user. I need help with some of the most fundamental things in my day. But I also work as a filmmaker, and I travel a lot. So I have a personal assistant who can... Basically, I can work their hours into my daily and weekly schedule so I can actually function as a filmmaker as well as as you know, a, a normal person, so to speak, and um, so I, I'm not I'm not considered in the eyes of of the Centre for Independent Living. I'm not considered a person with a disability per se. I'm considered a leader who's actually employing a person or assistant, and uh, I'm the one who actually directs my routine through their hours given to me. And unfortunately, I mean, I've got I, I've got say 30 hours a week from a personal assistant service. That is actually considered a, a gross luxury compared to some of the the time that's distributed to some per- people with disabilities. Yeah, because I was just about to ask you that question. How many hours a week does your personal assistance service provide you with? Yeah, but like I said, I'm one of, I, I'm probably one of a very small handful of people. And thankfully, the, those disability organizations and independent living movements they see somebody like myself out there doing something with my life and actually contributing and actually having, uh, not just contribute to, to society, but having some kind of a, a positive influence. Mm-hmm. But there are, honestly, there are tens and tens of thousands of people across this country who really don't have the opportunity to pursue their goals. Why not? I, I Why are they not pursuing them? Why are they not um, going to their going to their particular centre of independent living, wherever that may be? Why are these people not pursuing that? Because they don't have the funds. That, like, the, the funds aren't distributed across the country for the PA service. Mm. In fact, most people I meet with a disability actually aren't even aware that this this facility is even in existence. Like, like most people out there rely on home health, rely on public health care, public 
public health nurses and occupational therapists. It's a lot of people out there are living an old fashioned model in this country where they are considered second class citizens and they just re like honestly, I am absolutely blessed and I I realise that every day. The very fact that I have a disability in this country and I can actually call myself a filmmaker. And you know what? I, I can call myself a brother, a son, and I can call myself an uncle, and I actually play that role in my life with my family. But I couldn't do that without that service. I really couldn't. Okay. Well, as I said to you, um, this coming uh, this coming Tuesday, no Thursday, a motion will be brought before the Doyle to debate uh, our right to a personal assistance service. Right now, we need to become active and let the elected yeah. lep- representatives know that this is a human rights issue and uh, because human rights issues are huge at the moment and the need uh, to, to mobilise friends and family to email the local TDs. Everybody out there should be emailing, their, getting in touch with their local TDs to ensure that they participate in the debate and vote in favour of the motion. Do you know, it, it, it's happening today. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really, really important. I mean, in, in all honesty, Paddy, um, if you didn't have your personal assistance service, do you know, you'd probably be a lot more confined to your, ho- to your home or, as you said, you might be in residential care. And that would cost a serious amount of money to have you stay in residential yeah. care than to have you as an yeah. independent living man who's employing another person. Yeah. I'll tell you a disgusting fact, and this is no exaggeration. There are, I don't know how many thousands, but there are people out there today that are actually confined to their bed all day today because they don't, they literally do not have anybody around that's actually going to be able to help them to get out of bed, do some very basic things, and get back into bed that night. There are people staying in their bed today because they have, they don't have that help necessary. I know you might argue that there, 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 there's, there's nurses there to help them, but literally they don't. They're at the mercy of very limited time with these services. Mm. We've met people at meetings there recently and they literally, it's its not uncommon for them to have three days of their week spent in bed. That's not fair. Can you imagine? That's not, Can you imagine? That's no life to live. You know, that is not living a life at all. That, that, not, that's you're a, right. existing. You know, this vote is happening today or the, the, this... Um, the, the, you know, the motion is being brought today in the Doyle debate and I think people need to, at this moment, get on to your local TD. Every TD in this country has an email or has a constituency office. Would ha- They'd have a phone number attached to that. Start making those calls and, you know, change this because to think that there are people just in their beds because there's nobody to help them to get out and to get dressed and sit up and have a cup of tea and a chat with another person for a little while every day is shocking. And I thought we had moved on. I really thought we'd moved on from this. Paddy, good to talk to you. And thank you for bringing this to our attention. I appreciate the time. Not at all. Thank you so much, Paddy. Um, That is uh, Paddy Slattery. He's a filmmaker um, from Clonbalog. Um, he uh, his 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 film right his debut feature film is Broken Law, and uh, we can uh, find out we'll find out actually where we can find Broken Law. Okay, so get on to your TDs, because as I said, this motion is being put before the Doyle today. Um, and right now, we all need to become active and let our elected representative representatives know that this is it is absolutely fundamentally a human rights issue and we need you to mobilise friends and family. Email your local TDs, ring your local TDs, knock on their door for a change because do you know what? Next year, there's going to be a general election and they're going to be knocking on your door. This right here is what I'm talking about. Midlands Today with Lindsay Dolan on Midlands 103.